I don't think I knew what this question was asking when I was in eighth or ninth grade. This seems more advanced, um, but it's actually really, really easy, but it does require some memorization. So the easy way to do this is to recognize that they're giving us a quadratic equation, and when it's equal to zero, it's basically in like the best version possible. We, whenever we have these x squareds, we really want everything to be equal to zero. It's just kind of how squareds work best in algebra. So that this is a good thing for us. Then, when they're asking for solutions, they're asking for the values of x that make this true. And my instinct here would be to do something called factoring, which is where we get those like parentheses terms. It kind of looks like this, where you have like x and x, and then it's like maybe plus 4, minus 12, whatever it is. That's factoring. That's its own thing. But it's not going to help us here. And the reason it's not going to help is that this equation is not factorable, or at least not easily factorable. We would have to use quadratic formula to get those values of x. And that is way too advanced, in my opinion, for a PSAT. So we just don't want to even touch that. Basically, though, there's a shortcut. Because they're not asking for the solutions. They're asking for the sum of the solutions. And there is a formula that just gives us that. It is the sum of the solutions is equal to negative b over a. So where are b and a coming from? Well, whenever we have a quadratic in this format, it basically takes the, the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 or equal to y. And so when we talk about a, b, and c, we're talking about the numbers that are in front of those very specific parts of the x's, right? So the a is whatever number is in front of the x squared. And now I know when we have this equation here, we don't see an a. There is no number in front of that x squared. But hopefully by now with algebra, you remember that when there's no number in front of a variable, that number is 1, right? We wouldn't write it, but it's there. And so we might want to write it just so we can see it better. This is 1x squared. So my a is 1. b is a little easier to find. It's going to be negative 40. So notice it's not just the 40 that's attached to the x. It's the sign that's also attached to the 40, right? So we need to include positives and negatives. If it's a positive number, it doesn't matter. But if it's a negative, it's a minus, that, that negative comes along for the ride. It's part of the B. So the reason this all matters here is then we can just plug in. Our B, like I said, was negative 40, and our A was 1. So all the math that really is required here is recognizing that two negatives make a positive because negative times negative 1 times negative 40 is just positive 40. So this whole thing is really just positive 40. And that's choice D, and that's the answer. So Really, what this question comes down to is almost no math at all. We just need to kind of look at it, be able to read the equation, memorize this formula, and then it just kind of does the work for us. But I think that's a lot for 8th or ninth grade. I don't think most people are, are into that. Um, there is another way to handle this. We could take that equation and pop it into Desmos. And uh, basically, because it only has one variable, it only has x's in, and no y, what it's going to do is it's going to graph two vertical lines for us, straight up and down. Now I can see one of them right here. It's, the other one is off screen, but we'll get to it. But notice there's a little dot that I can tap at that axis point, at, at the x-axis. Now that, if I follow this line up and down, oh, is it not going to do it? Uh, oh, yep, there it is, there it is. Notice the y coordinate is changing, but the x is always the same. It's that negative 248, right, or 0.248. So that is one of the solutions. Basically, what I'm doing when I'm graphing this is the calculator is solving this equation for me, and it's giving me a solution. And so one of them is negative 0.248. Now I can find the other one. I have to just zoom out, and eventually it's going to appear. And there it is. And I can tap it, and it is 40 point. 248. So these are two vertical lines. They never touch. They never curve. A, a normal parabola, a normal quadratic will curve, but this is not going to do that because it's not equal to y. It's equal to zero. If I change it to equal to y, different story. You can see it's starting to curve even though it's minor. It's still curving. So when I have it with just an x, what Desmos basically does is it solves algebra equations for you. It's very convenient. So um, what that means then is if I have both of the solutions and they were asking for the sum of them, we can just add them together. And you can see negative 0.248 plus 40.248 will just be regular old 40. So we could get it that way as well. I don't think that that's the most efficient way, but 
especially if this is all new to you, there's less to memorize with that solution because all you really need to know is what a solution is. A solution, when we have a single equation, is like the values of x that make that equation true. And what Desmos will do most of the time, if you put that equation into it, it will just solve it for you and it'll give us those values as straight vertical lines. And you can just tap them and you're gonna see what those values are. So hopefully that helps. That can help when the algebra gets crazy, but this is just a crazy question for lots of reasons, but we are nearing the end of the section. This is question 20 out of 22. This is where you might be running out of time and that's okay. Just if you had no idea here, just take a random guess and at least give yourself a shot at some lucky points, but it is not a high priority question for most people.